Our guest is coming soon. Let's get ready. Hi everyone, welcome to the Joyful Investor Channel. We have another episode on the series Pry and Joy, where we invite investors to share their take on money and investing topics and how they manage to find pride and joy in this process. The guest that I have invited today is an investor who has become a household name among the Singapore investing community. He is someone who is constantly learning about investing. You may know him as someone who always shares about investing, credit cards and personal finance while managing to sneak in some jokes from time to time. That's Kelvin from Kelvin Learns Investing. Kelvin, would you like to do your usual iconic greetings? Sure. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Kelvin here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kelvin, you have become an inspirational figure for many Singaporeans after you started a YouTube channel. As of the filming right now, you have already gone past 70k subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, do people actually recognize you when you're out on the streets? Like, you know, ask to take a photo with you? Yeah, my goodness, I, every time I go out, there's mm. bound to be one person who recognizes me. Oh, okay. And they're like, hi, Kelvin. <laughs> I'm a bit uh, shy, la, so la, uh, uh. I don't know how to respond to them. I say, hi, hi, hi. Uh -huh. yeah, ah, so I see. Uh, it takes a while to get used to it. Uh. So now I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with getting recognized. Wow. So if, you're, if you guys do see me on the street, do say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take photo with you? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> So seeing how you have actually grown your YouTube channel from scratch is really impressive. And uh, anyone who have watched your videos before would know about your pet phrases like Toko, Jiki <laughs> right, and many others. Yeah. So, um, but the thing is, you know, a lot of people only see the glorious side of uh, YouTubers, but do not know actually how much time and effort you guys actually put in to produce good content. So for Kelvin yourself, what do you find as the most challenging part in maintaining your YouTube channel? So the challenging part is, I would say not right now it's not that challenging because I'm already more or less uh, made it in a way. But I would say the challenging part is right at the start where I first started in uh, 2020, about two years ago. Mm. Because I was juggling between my job, mm. YouTube, my kid and my sleep. <laughs> so uh, I have to find time to do those four things all together without, without sacrificing my health. Which mm -hmm. I did, I did sacrifice my health. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so once I made it around last year, mm. I'll, I'll consider if at least 10,000 subscribers or more, I would have, have at least made it. Mm. So from then on, and what happened last year was I lost my job. Uh, okay. So I had more free time. Uh, so manage. what happened was I started doing YouTube uh, as my full, full time job. Mm. So it's, I would say it's much more relaxing now. Mm. Yeah, so that's good. Mm. You have more control as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm, so okay. I would say it. So in summary, so I would say it's at the start that is uh. uh, challenging. Mm. Right. I guess you know, everything happens for a reason. You know, like what they always say, uh, when one door closes, another one opens. Mm. Yeah. And really, we have to appreciate how much time that YouTubers put in to uh, generate good contents right. online. Right. So on to the topic of personal finance. Uh, today I want to start off by talking about something that um, has been troubling many Singaporeans, which is the topic of sandwich generation. Uh, so a sandwich generation is defined as individuals who need to take care of the uh, financial obligations of taking care of their child as well as to take care of their uh, aging parents. Mm. So a few years back, NTUC Income, they released a statistic that says that 94% of parents 
aged between 35 to 55 years old are caught in this sandwich generation trap. So Kelvin, do you feel the pressure of being in a sandwich generation currently? Uh, and as a result, are there any financial woes that you face which you would like to share with us? So a quick background for those who do not know. Uh, me and my wife's parents are in Malaysia. Mm. So uh, we do give them money. But I would say the money that we give them is much lesser because of SGD1 to RM3. <laughs> so that's good in a way. <laughs> yes. uh, then from on the other side, there's my kid who's in mm. Singapore right now. So probably you cost about $1,000 to $1,500 to mm. raise the kid, uh, including childcare and diapers and milk, mm. those kind of stuff. But I, overall, I would say the pressure is still not as high as the people staying in Singapore. Mm. Uh, but to me, even though it's low pressure, but it's still pressure. Mm. So rather than just admitting defeat, what I did at that year where I married my wife, because suddenly all the expenses go up, yes. uh, mm. what I did is that I immediately went into <laughs> the kind of do or die mode. Uh. So I started <laughs> investing, uh, oh. see how to improve my finances. Uh, okay. You know, just everything. Uh, because uh, I couldn't stand seeing my uh, account balance going down. Mm. Yeah, so I started like improving myself a lot. Mm, learning more as well. Yeah. Uh, I see. So your, your drive for betterment is admirable. Um, so I understand that you recently quit your full-time job, right? And then now you're a full-time YouTuber. So does this change in career path affect you in any way? Like, uh, you know, adding more pressure and burden for you uh, into falling into this sandwich generation trap or mm. like more uncertainties, less stability, things like that. Uh, a quick correction. I didn't quit my job. I lost my job uh, because my company closed down last year. Uh, okay. So I think uh, if this were to happen much earlier, mm. I would be much more stressful. Mm. But since last year, uh, my YouTube income had sort of exceeded my day job. Yes. So uh, I, I would think that losing a job is a blessing in disguise for me. Ah, uh, okay. But uh, still going forward, right? The thing about YouTube income is that it's very unstable. Like, mm. um, just take for example, last year, my YouTube income is has dropped by half to this year. So oh, okay. uh, that's the stressful part because I wouldn't know what would happen going forward. Mm. And But the good thing is that uh, my expense is very low. So even mm. if it drops to zero like tomorrow, mm. I wouldn't be affected much because at the worst case, uh, my all my savings can still last me for a while. Mm. Uh, and meanwhile, I can still look for another job. Yes, like I yes. go back to programming. Yeah, with your skills that you have. Yeah, so I wouldn't worry too much right now. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. okay. So tell me, what are some actions that you have taken uh, to get out of this sandwich generation? Uh, or any advice that you have for those who are currently still struggling uh, for falling into this sandwich generation trap? So I think I will, I'm quite fortunate in mm. the sense that my parents don't really need my money. Mm. While I do give them money, what I do is that instead of giving them directly, I invest the money for them. Ah, okay. So that uh, whenever they need the money, I can just like withdraw it out and pass ah. to them. Uh, but for those who, I mean, their parents really do need the money, mm. I understand how tough is it for them. Mm. Because like you have to choose, do you want to be a filial child or <laughs> do you want to plan for your future? Uh, to that, I would say, why not both, right? Why not uh, both? Uh. Uh, so, there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, but I think the most important way is to you have to improve your financial status. So, mm. there's two ways. On the saving side, you can look at like uh, getting a credit card. Mm. Like maybe the, the I'm using UOB one that mm. gives like 3.3% cashback. Mm. So, 3.3% cashback may sound very really little. But if you count over one year, right? It's, it's more than enough to buy right, one or two cans of milk for your kid. <laughs> so that's nice. And maybe like uh, try putting your savings into a high interest savings account. Mm. It, it's around like maybe 1% to 2% if you use some services like uh, what? Scythe uh, Cash and those uh, places. Mm. So then on the other side, see how to improve your income. Mm. Because if you don't have income, you can't invest your money. Yes. So in that sense, uh, so in summary, just improve your income and save more money. 
Mm, okay. So you mentioned that you invest money for your parents, right? Yeah, right. Like how receptive are they to the idea of investing? Because I think maybe some of the earlier generations, maybe they, they might still be a bit scared of you know, investing your own money. Do they tell you things like, I must be careful uh, <laughs> in case you get scared or yeah. you, know, you can lose a lot of money in the stocks market? Do, uh, how, how's their re- reaction on this? Yeah, so uh, at the start, I would say they weren't so receptive. Uh, um, but they do see how I invest because I have a YouTube channel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it sort of give them the confidence uh, that I know okay. how to invest for them. Mm. So uh, take for example, I wouldn't invest in uh, very dangerous stocks for them. Mm. Instead, I would just go into like safer stocks like dividend mm. stocks like mm. Singapore. DBS. Ah, uh, okay, I the see. stocks that can't fluctuate much, but at the same time give them some passive income in a mm. way. Mm. So when okay. you know how safe it is, they are more receptive to the idea uh, mm. of me investing for them. I see, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a good point. Yes. Mm. Thanks Kelvin for sharing that. Right. Uh change definitely has to start for each and every one of us if we want to be the last sandwich generation. Yeah. Yeah, so that we can be more financially independent. We don't need to depend on our next generation to support us financially. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so, one of the actions that we can take to avoid getting into the sandwich generation trap is to learn how to start investing. Right. So, Kelvin, now that you look back in time, um, what are some key areas in investing which you feel that you have improved and grown over time, over the years as an investor? Mm. So... Like, like what my channel name says, Kelvin learns investing. Mm. So even right through now, I'm still learning how to invest. Mm. Uh, so what changed from last time to now, right? Mm. Last time, I considered myself as a gambler, not an investor. I was basically trying to buy low, sell high, but end up selling, uh, buying high and selling low. <laughs> like all the okay. new newbies out there. Lah. Uh, I would still argue that I'm not as good as an investor. Uh as what I would want to be like maybe I want to be Warren Buffett mm. probably I'm still way off compared to him uh, because if I look back in just the two years alone I've made a lot of mistakes like maybe buying those uh, innovative stocks like maybe uh, what RK, RG, Square all those are my mistakes I, I did that <laughs> uh, so now what I'm trying to change is that, uh, that there's a quote in Game of Thrones I don't know if you have seen it Game of Thrones. So that's this guy, Peter Bellish. He says that knowledge is power. <laughs> so, so what I'm trying to do is try to gain as much knowledge as possible uh. because that's the only thing separating you mm. from becoming a millionaire. Mm. Because the more things that you can learn, uh, the more ways you can earn money. Mm. So now, for me, uh, how I'm gaining knowledge is that I try to learn about fundamental analysis, like seeing, yeah. trying to value how where how good the company is, mm. uh, probably add in technical analysis, mm. but how to when to buy a stock at mm. the best possible time. So I think all this will keep growing mm. uh, as I continue on my investing journey. Mm. So most of the time when we talk about money and investing topics, right, it's usually about how to get better or how to generate more wealth over time. I find that there is something which is less spoken about, which is the part of financial wellness. Right. Uh, I think there are too many people in society who are getting overly exhausted in their race to earn more money in their jobs mm. to the extent that you know some of them they actually burn out already but they don't even realize that. Right. So uh, what do you think are some of the things that we can do for better management of our financial mm. wellness? Right. So uh, you, need to, you need to know that uh, this is a journey that will take like 30 years, 40 years you may be able to do it uh, in maybe two to three years, but can mm. you last that long without mm. burning out? So I would say that the goal of uh, earning money is to achieve happiness. Mm. It is a path to happiness. Mm. But I think it would be pointless if you're not happy along the way. Mm. Yes. So uh, so for example, should you do a high-stress high job that probably pays you ten twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month, but you're unhappy? Or should you work at a 9 to 5 job that pays you maybe $5,000 but you're happy? Mm. Uh, which is the correct answer? That I do not know. Mm. But I've seen what people who are dying, their comments are like, I shouldn't have worked that hard when I'm younger. Mm. 
mm. or probably I should have spent more time spend more time with my loved ones yes uh, so whatever you do you have to choose the path that gives you the least amount of regret uh, mm. going forward mm. so um, there are a lot of aspects to this like, rather than working so hard mm. you can try working smarter in a way uh, okay. like probably instead of working at a 9 to 5 job try to find a job that pays you by results mm. like maybe insurance agent I'm not, I'm not telling you to be insurance agent like just an example like. yes okay uh, just find a job that that you find happy doing mm. and probably at it best will be paid by results mm. then I think it will be the best like, if, uh, if you can keep going forward without uh, regretting mm. what your decisions in your past yes, yes. I like the one we should talk about working smarter as well yeah. because um, we have to recognize that it is a truth like, we, we don't always we are not always rewarded based on like how much time how much effort we put in mm. it's not a proportionate kind of results right. that returns that we will see so it is not to tell people to you know, become lazy but the whole message is that we need to see how to best you know, achieve the maximize the utility of our time and effort correct yeah yeah mm. So there are some personal finance advice, right, mm. that try to guilt trip people or you know, money shame people. Um, and I personally don't think that such advice would actually help people because they try to put people down, right? So there's one which I chance upon online, which is that if you aren't rich, then don't buy things that you like. Or maybe if you translate it in our society context today, right, mm. it is something like uh, don't spend money on that Starbucks drink or that bubble tea because if you save money on that, you can become richer, right? But the thing is, if you need to grow your money at the expense of your happiness, then something is also very wrong, yeah. right? So for you, Calvin, what are some bad money uh, or financial advice that you have heard before and you can't agree with? So there are three bad advice that I have heard. Mm. First one is, don't get a girlfriend or boyfriend because it will make you poorer. Oh. I, think, I think if it's already in you, even mm. without a girlfriend or boyfriend, you will still be poor. Um, <laughs> yes. So, this one I have to disagree like, because getting mm. a girlfriend or boyfriend, if you are interested in guys or girls, just, just go for it. Like. Use it as a motivation to do better. Yeah. Uh, and the second one is don't get a credit card because it will make you spend more money. Again, I would think this is this is nonsense because if it's already in you to spend mm. more money, even without a credit card, you will still, still spend. spend more money. Mm. You will still try to bankrupt yourself. So <laughs> uh, getting a credit card is especially good if you're trying to achieve financial independence mm. because saving the extra 3 to 5% a year is really good. Like I say, it, it can buy you extra Starbucks coffee or diapers or mm. a, a, a can of milk for a kid. Mm. And and the third one is avoid investing because you will lose more money. To this, I would say just by not investing, you are already confirmed plus chop lose money mm. because of uh, inflation that's going up so high right, right now, right? Uh, yeah. Like the egg prices are going up, mm. Daiso prices are going up. Basically, even by not investing, you are losing money. So by investing, you will have at least the chance of winning and coming up ahead. Mm. So these are the three advice that mm. but, uh, they are quite bad. Uh. Mm. Okay, thanks yeah. for sharing that. <laughs> right, so bringing this topic of financial wellness back into investing, right? So investing should be something that's joyful because mm. you see, why do we even start investing today? It is because we want to create an additional source of income that can help to elevate our uh, burden and our so that we can retire earlier, right? right? Yeah, so, but the problem for many investors is that once they start investing, then it becomes a new headache for them. Right. Yeah, so how do you deal with financial anxiety when it comes to investments? Story time. So, when I was young, like, in my secondary school, mm. I have to cross the, a three-lane road to take the bus opposite my school. Like. Mm. So, the only way to cross the road is by jaywalking. Because you're <laughs> <in> Malaysia. <laughs> uh, so, as a kid myself, I don't know how to cross a three-lane road mm. during uh, rush hours. Ah, uh, okay. And the only way, so I found that the only way to do it is by following other kids mm. who are older than me when they cross, others cross together. Mm. Because that way, the cars would slow down. Mm. They, because they wouldn't want to crash into 10 kids at the same time yeah. and go to jail. <laughs> so, uh, after doing that for a while, I mm. found the secret to crossing the road. Uh, and, I, and I got better at doing it. Mm. So, back to your question. Uh, 
the story just now was totally unrelated. <laughs> um, but what I learned is that if you are getting stressed up uh, when you're investing, it just means that you are basically investing the money that you can't afford to lose. Like, I wouldn't mm. get stressed about losing $1 or $2. Mm. Uh, but if you're losing $1,000 or more and you're getting stressed about it, it just means that that's the money you can't afford to lose. And because of that, you're doing something wrong. Mm. And the second thing which I learned is that if you are not at investing, like mm. me, um, <laughs> no, <don't> say that. <laughs> uh, what you need to do is, uh, like the story just now, if mm. you are bad at investing, you can try starting by following to see how others invest. Mm. Like maybe if your idol is Warren Buffett, Coco, mm. <laughs> you can see how he invests. There are a lot of YouTube channels and forums out there mm. because of people teaching how to invest. So just learn from them first. Mm. And once you get better at it, uh, you can start developing your own ways to invest. Mm. But of course, I, I'm not saying that you should follow them blindly la, because mm. if, the cra- if the car comes crashing, everyone would die together. <laughs> <laughs> so learn, from, learn investing from a lot of different sources. And, and so to, to try to find a best way to invest. And that way, you get to get across the world safely. Uh, because if it works for them, somehow it will work for you too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, finding a way that is most comfortable with for yourself. Lah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So thanks for sharing all this, Calvin. And thank you for taking the time to come on our Pride and Joy series. It was our pleasure having you here. Yeah, thanks for yeah. inviting me. Thanks. Mm-hmm.